Welcome back to the channel. And in this three part tutorial series, I'm gonna show you how to make this marble machine in Blender 4.0. It's super satisfying. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. So this is gonna be part one where I'm gonna show you guys how to do the modeling. And I'll quickly show you guys what the actual blend file looks like. So here you can see, um, we'll be starting in part one by actually modeling most of this over here. And you can see the animation here is just repeating along um, this point here. So we've got five repeating um, animations and simulations. But the thing here is I'm gonna show you a neat little trick. So we only have to animate once and then we're just gonna offset the animation um, for all the other ones like this. So it's a ton of fun. This is part one, we'll be modeling. Part two, we'll do our animation and simulation. And in part three, we'll finish off with materials and lighting. As always, the final blend file will be on my Patreon. And you guys can check that out in the description below. So without wasting any more time, let's jump in and make this. So with a new scene opened up in Blender, we're gonna select all of the default objects and press delete. Then we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a plane. And with the plane active, we're gonna go S.2 and hit enter. So S.2. And if you press N and go to your item, you go to your property, um, transform properties, you can see the scale here is 0.2 on all the axes. So now we're gonna also go to our modifier stack and we're gonna go add modifier and go search and type in array. Let's click on array. And we're gonna press seven to go into our top orthographic view. So seven on our number pad. And let's just come here to the factor and make it uh, 1.05, just to add a little bit of a gap. And let's just come here to the count and make it five, like so. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, tab into edit mode and we're gonna go to our edge select option. We're gonna select this edge over here. And with this edge selected, you're gonna press G and Y. So G, Y followed by 2.6 and then hit enter. So we've moved it up by pressing G, Y and 2.6. So now it's moved this way. And then you're gonna come in here, control R hovering over this edge. You're gonna see the yellow line appear. You're just gonna um, roll your middle mouse button and keep rolling it. You see the little yellow lines here are segments and let's add in this many to start off with. So they look like squares, double click. And then we're gonna select this edge over here. And then we're gonna press free on a number pad to go into our right orthographic view. Let's go to our vertex select option so we can see it better. Enable proportional editing. And with this active in our right orthographic view, that end bit, we're gonna go G, Z, and one. And we have proportional editing enabled. So if you roll our middle mouse button, we can control the fall off. So we're gonna control it. So it goes about something like this. So we have a curve that looks like this. And then let's select just the middle um, two verts here. And then back in our right orthographic view, Let's just go and bend them up a little bit more. In fact, I might grab the ones up a little bit here. So in the right view, let's just go and drag these. And I'm gonna go into wireframe just so I can select these easier. So I'm just gonna select these guys here like so. And I kind of need to flatten out a little bit at the top, something like this. There we go. Okay, it doesn't really matter if it's not too smooth because we are going to be giving this a subdivision surface. So if something like that, we're gonna go ahead and let's go add modifier and go search and go sub, get a subdivision surface. Then back in edit mode, let's turn off proportional editing. And in here, we're gonna go control R, left click once and just slide in an edge to tighten that up. I'm gonna come up here, control R, left click once and just G to move it up. And then we're gonna come here, control R and you're gonna see an edge appear. And we're just gonna double click to add it in and then we're gonna go control B or command B to create a bevel. I'm gonna create a bevel like so. And then we're gonna go control R in the middle again, double click to add it in. And then we're gonna go alt S and scale it in along the normals to create kind of like this trench like so. And then we're gonna to go to our face select option. Let's go to our subdiv and just enable the on cage here so we can see better. And let's select this face and this face holding in shift. And let's go E to extrude and Z and extrude it down onto Z a little bit and then E to extrude and Z again, like so. And let's go X and delete those faces. Then let's go to edge select, shift alt, left click on this bottom edge and then go S, Z and just flatten it onto Z like so. Okay, something like that is perfect. And then let's tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. Let's go to our add modifier. Let's search and go solid and click on solidify. 
And let's come over here to the thickness and let's just bring it up into the positives. So something like that. And now we have some thickness to this and it's looking really good. And now that we have this, let's create the slide that kind of goes down. It's a lot simpler. So the one that brings it back. So in our right orthographic view, um, in fact, let's just, let's just go shift alt and left click with our edge select to select this back edge over here, like so. And in our right orthographic view, we're just gonna go shift D to duplicate and bring it down. And let's just go R to rotate it slightly and let's go E to extrude. And let's extrude it down to about here. E to extrude again, E to extrude. E to extrude, and we don't want to bring it too close to this thing, otherwise our ball would get jammed. But we just want to kind of um, enable proportional editing if it's easier, and just make sure to make it connected only. But we want to just kind of have it coming under here, we're going E to extrude again, E to extrude, and let's just have it coming right to the end here. And what we're going to do, we're going to go to our vertex select option, we're going to select this vertex here and go G, Y, so G, Y, and with a proportional editing, let's just make it small influence and just bring it forward so it's a bit pointier, like that. And maybe in a right view, we'll just kind of move the whole thing back a little bit more proportional editing, just so that tip is sitting right here. And if it's easier, just go into wireframe so you can more easily um, adjust these curves here, like that. So something like that looks really good. And now we kind of have our setup. Let's just quickly tab out. Let's go Shift A and under our mesh options, let's add in a UV sphere. And let's type in S.1, so S.1 and hit enter. That's gonna be the size of our sphere. And we're gonna go Control A or Command A and make sure to apply the scale. Then right click and go Shade Smooth. And now we're gonna go to our top view and we're gonna go for now, just Shift D to duplicate it and bring it over here. And let's just go G and move it down and kind of just sit it in. This is just a test one, just a dummy sphere, just so we can see if we sit it right on there. So without intersecting to see if it's not touching the top here. So we need at least enough of a clearance that from the front view, it's fitting just in here, nice and snug. If it's not, just tab, tab into edit mode, select some of these verts down here. And with proportional editing, just bring it down just ever so slightly. And then back in object mode, you should be able to move it and make sure that it's all looking good. Another thing we want to do is grab the slide, right click and go shade smooth. And under the subdivision surface, let's bump up the viewport amount, like so. And now we have the more difficult thing to model, which is our slide, it's now done. So make sure to save as you go. So let's go um, shift A, let's go add in under mesh options, a plane. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go and select our slide, holding in shift, select the spheres. And we're just gonna go to our top view. And in our top orthographic, we're gonna go G, X, and just move this over till it's sitting in the middle like so. So you can actually look here, if you go into wireframe, look at the middle um, slide here. Let's just move it along the X, just so the middle edge here is lining up with the green axis line. So more or less in the middle, like so. And then let's make sure to grab this plane over here that we added in. We're gonna go G, Z, and move it down. And let's go into our front orthographic view. And I'd say about this much for now. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go to our mesh options and add in a torus. And with this torus here, we're gonna go tab into edit mode and turn off proportional editing. And with everything active, we're gonna go Alt S, and just make it skinnier along the normal. So Alt S. Let's go over ring about this big. And then let's go S and scale that down. And let's make it a little bit smaller than the diameter of one of these spheres. In fact, let's just quickly go back in to object mode. Let's just um, grab this sphere over here in the side. Let's just go G, X and move it. Let's place it in the middle here, like so, more or less. And let's just grab this Taurus, tab into edit mode, and let's just keep going S to scale. And let's just go in a little bit like so. And then we're just gonna go tab back out. We're gonna grab the sphere, we're gonna go G, Z, and just move it till it's just sitting in top of there, but not touching. So just sitting right inside of here like that. Then let's grab the Taurus, right click and go shade smooth. And this is gonna be the little grabber 
uh, the little thing that they fall into and it kind of pushes them up and down. So let's actually grab this and this, these two. Let's go into our top graphic view and let's just go G, X, move it over. And we're gonna place this in the middle here as close as possible. Going to wireframe always helps because you can see the, the edges for reference. I'm just gonna put it as close as we can to the middle. And then we're gonna go into our right orthographic view. And in our right orthographic view, we're gonna go G and move it down. And we're gonna have it just so it's sitting just underneath here, like so, this bottom spout here. But we don't want it sitting in, so it's touching. We just want it, if it were to move up, that it doesn't touch this lip over here. So we're gonna place it right here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this torus, we're gonna to tab into edit mode. Let's get our edge select option and let's go to our front orthographic view. With edge select, let's just left click on this edge here to loop select it. Then we're gonna go shift D to duplicate and then R, Z, 9, 0 and hit enter. So we've just duplicated it, rotated it 90 degrees on the Z. And then let's go with it still active into our right orthographic view. And let's go E to extrude and Y and extrude it out. And let's go about as much as this torus is wide almost, something like that. And then I'm gonna go back into solid view and let's just go, you could use the spin tool here if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna go E to extrude, R to rotate, and I'm just gonna do that a few times, like so. E to extrude, R to rotate, it doesn't have to be perfect, something like that. And then let's go E to extrude again and Z. And then again, let's go E to extrude and go down even further. Let's take it down about this much, just so it's really sticking into the ground like that. Now we have this kind of pole holding it. We're gonna tab back out, right click and go shade smooth again. And if you get any of this weird kind of normals, just go into edit mode, press A to select everything, go Alt N and recalculate the outside just to fix the normal issues. Yeah, but that's all we're really looking to make, something like that. And now we're gonna make a little shovel that's gonna push it up. So in our right of graphic view, let's just go Shift A, let's add in a cube. Tab into edit mode, let's just go S to scale it down about this big and let's go S, Y and flatten that onto Y. Tab back out into object mode and let's go G and move it over here. And we're gonna move it up so it's just sitting in front of the top um, slide here like so. And maybe tab into edit mode now, let's scale it down a little bit more. Let's go R to rotate it. Let's go to a vertex select option, select these bottom verts and let's go S, X and flatten a little bit on the X. And we're gonna press also A to select all of it and go Control B to create a slight bevel on it like that. And then in our right orthographic, we just grab this bottom vertex, just bring these two closer together to make it a bit sharper. And now we kind of have kind of like the shovel like so. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tab back out into object mode in the top orthographic. I'm just gonna go G, X and just move it till it's lining up we have this guy over here. So as close as you can get it to the middle should be fine, like that. And then back in our right orthographic view, we want it sitting right about here like that. Okay, that's looking really good. Um, there's one more thing we can make, just going back into edit mode of this guy, let's just go Shift A, add in a cylinder. And with this all active, we're gonna go S to scale, G to move it over. And we wanna make this quite small because it's gonna sit right here at the top and I'm gonna just grab maybe this top face and go E to extrude as to scale and then just E to extrude up on the Z and let's just go G, Z and move that pole really high and then tab back out. Now, obviously it's not lining up on this side. So let's just go into our front orthographic and in edit mode, let's just select this whole thing and let's just go G, X and move it over till it's sitting here on this guy over here like that. There we go, so that's looking really good. And now we have all of the main elements here for the animation kind of ready, but we also wanna just grab this floor here, um, tab into edit mode, and let's go maybe to our top of graphic. Let's just go S, X and scale it till it's exactly as wide as the slide. And now that it's the same width, we just wanna come in here and go Control R, double click to add an edge, go to the loop, cut and slide and let's give that nine cuts like so. And what that should do for us, if we now go to our edge select option, uh, let's just go over here, control R, click once and just slide in a loop coming in to about here. So we don't want it going in front of this um, bendy pipe over here. And now we're gonna select this edge over here and let's just go to our top view. 
And now we're gonna go Shift Alt and just left click on this edge over here. And while we're still holding in Shift and Alt, we're gonna left click on every second one, going all the way up to here. And these are the ones that sit exactly in the middle of our slides. Then we're gonna go Control B to create a bit of a bevel, like so, about this thick. And then let's get our face select option. And then let's just select this face, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Let's go X and delete those faces. Press A to select everything, go E to extrude and Z, and extrude it down on the Z to make a bit of a slab. Then tab back out, go to modifiers, and let's give this a bevel. Click on bevel, and let's bring down the bevel amount, and give it some more segments. Let's right click and go shade smooth. And now you can see this is what we have. So if you want to, you could go into your top orthographic view. You can see that we can grab the shovel and the sphere here, and the holder. And we can just kind of move them going G, X, and move them until they sit right in the middle here. And that's why I wasn't too bothered with getting it 100%, because now we kind of have this as a reference. And later when we duplicate this, we can place it right into those grooves for a reference, okay? So that's all good. I think that's looking really, really good. And then let's go Shift A. Let's just quickly add in a plane. S to scale it way up, and then go G, Z, and move it down until it's just sitting underneath the slab we created. And then let's tab into edit mode and go to our edge select. Select this edge and this edge over here. E to extrude and Z. And then let's go S to scale that way up like so. And in our top view, we're just gonna go G and move it out a little bit like that. And then press A to select everything, Alt. And then go Control B to create a bevel. Roll the middle mouse button and create a stage like so. Tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. And now we have our stage. Now we can come over here, position ourselves about here. And let's go shift A, add in a camera. With your camera active, press zero on your number pad. Then go G, hit the middle mouse button and just zoom out like so. And then press G to move your camera. And then just get a shot that you like. I'm gonna leave it here for now. And I'm gonna make sure to save. So I'm gonna leave it here for now for part one. In part two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the little stopper over here that stops the balls from going too far when they come back down. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna apply the modifiers on the slide. We'll be adding some physics to it and we'll also be animating these little components here and duplicating them, also offsetting the animation so we get that kind of cool offset effect. And then we'll be ready to go into part three where we'll do the materials, the lighting and final rendering. So thank you so far for watching this. And remember that the final result is on my Patreon. That's in the description. And it also is a good way for you guys to support the channel so I can keep making this sort of content for the community.